The communion, the Greek word there is the word koinonia. That's where God's sharing, fellowship, you know, it, 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 it connotes the idea of constant fellowship and sharing together. You know, as we talk to God about everything, talk to God about my tie. Huh? Tie, you go, go, God is not enjoying your tie. Oh, yeah, he is. Even the color of the one that you wear. Talk about the shoe. Talk about, you know, the car. Talk about every. God, God is interested in every area of our lives. Every area. The problem is we don't come in with him so we don't get to know. You'll be amazed what God likes and what God doesn't like. And you'll be amazed. This is, I love this one. At the sense of humor that God has. God is a very funny person. Who, you know, he can, he can crack jokes. <laughs> you know, you'll be saying something. I'll say, mm. <laughs> I'll say Lord, I understand. Take it. <laughs> and then you do no. I don't buy that one. It's not good. He said, I, you know, I like nice things. So don't bring that nonsense. So that they will start thinking that, you know, your faith is not working. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be amazed. You know, we, we've put God in all these religious boxes. The most, and I say this, it's not, what I'm about to say is not sacrilege. You know, the most irreligious person you'll ever meet is God. Now that sounds like a complete God is no religious at all. He's a, he's a realist. You know, that's why they didn't understand him when he was around. The religious people, the Pharisees, the guys who knew the word, they knew the letter of the law. They knew all the things that the Bible said, you know, and all of that. When the God of the Bible showed up, they didn't understand him. They didn't even recognize him. You know why? He did not fit their religious box. And you know the same thing is true today. Jesus shows up in the church today, half the church won't know him. No, correction, 90%. Not only will they not know him, they won't like him. Number one, a guy will be a hippie, he has long hair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he'll go to the party and drink wine. <laughs> then he will let Zacchaeus, you go and stay in Zacchaeus' house. A publican. And the man of God says, Alabaster box. Let a woman pour something on his head. Oh, there, no holy. You know why he did all of those things? He was in communion with the Holy Spirit. He was in communion. So whatever he did was what the Spirit told him to do. He did nothing except what God told him to do. And God will just, you know, say, you're going somewhere. This guy, is there. he doesn't stay in Jericho. He was just passing through. He just looks up. He sees this guy on the tree. Number one, how did he know his name? He doesn't live in Jericho. Word of knowledge. Zacchaeus, come down. For today, I must stay in your house. The guy came down with joy. He said, Lord! <laughs> Me! Hey, me, Zacchaeus! Yay! Hallelujah! Everything I have stolen, I return from. Oh, that's G, go, go. <laughs> I give it back for full. If I, you know, I give half that goes, I give to the poor. Jesus knew his heart. He put, yeah, he put it by crying over that tree. But you see, it was his heart that wanted, that was seeking after God, even though he had been a sinner. But he had a heart to do the right thing, but didn't have the power to do it. So when he went, Jesus, immediately Jesus could see everything. He said, come down. I'll stay in your house. He said, for he also is a son of Abraham. For salvation has come to this house today. Yeah. 
The religious guys will never have heard it. Even, and even if they heard it, they would have said it's the devil. <laughs> That's our problem. Now, this is the principle of praying with your thoughts. You have to understand the connection between words and thoughts. I, I thank God. God used my wife last week, you know, to trigger back our consciousness of the faith principles by talking to us about Mark eleven twenty three. You will see, quickly go to, he said, whosoever shall sit to the mountain be removed and be cast into the and shall not doubt where in his heart. That's the thought life. But shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have what he says. The point I want to make is this. Words, whether it's in English or your language or is in tongues or even groanings is what release power at different levels. Ordinary words release power. Tongues release more power. Travail releases even more power than the God. tongues. Is that three levels. That's why we need all three. But the point is, the power that the words release, now this is very important, this principle about to make, uh, share with you, and I shared it before, you know, is, it is the power that you release from the mouth. Your thoughts are what now direct the power. And now determine how that power is channeled and what it ultimately produces. That is why even if you say the right thing with your mouth and you think the wrong thing in your heart, you won't get what you say. That's why he said, whosoever shall say to the mountain, be removed, because, and shall not doubt in his heart. That is why your thought life is critical. I used this illustration some months ago or years ago when I preached this, you know, and it is this. The engine of a car is what gives it the power to move, the engine and the gear system. But it is very interesting. It is the steering that determines where it goes. Amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. Do you understand? You know, the, 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 there's a little bit of power in the center. That's why we have power steering. But you know that the steering doesn't have... Or the, or the power that it has is dependent on the engine. So if the engine is working and the steering is not working, you're going to have an accident too. The engine of the car can take you to Lagos. But you drive out of this place. And the guy steers the car in the opposite direction to Oyo. You're not going to get to Lagos. So. Even though power is available. That is where our thought life becomes critical. The thought life. The thought life. Is what is directing the power of God. That has been released from the prayer life. So, after I pray, I finish in a place of prayer, intercessory school or wherever, you know, uh, uh, all night or something. What am I thinking in the middle I leave? We just prayed for Nigeria. What are you thinking about Nigeria? I'm asking how Praise the Lord. It's true. I've been praying for Nigeria. It's well with Nigeria and everything. And I go out of the house. I go out of the church. And the next thing that, you know, I just see something on channel television. And my mind is, hey, it is Nigeria. Oh, blah, blah, blah. The power that I've just taken has just been snatched from me. And has been directed in a direction. Sure. That's why he gave us those instructions. Think on these things. 
Notice the instruction to think came after the instruction for prayer. It started with prayer. Then it ended with finally thoughts. Because it is your thoughts that will direct the power that has been released through your prayers. Hey! Am I talking to anybody here? It is for this reason the scripture is very clear and says, As a man thinketh in his heart, let me, I want to paraphrase that with revelation knowledge. If you read some of the translations, it says the man is thinking about the money he's going to give you for food. You know, that's, you know, what the modern translations say. You know, but if we catch the spirit of what that scripture is saying, as a man willeth in his heart, so is he. In other words, what you are finally going to become in your life is going to be a sum total of how your thoughts directed your prayers. And that will now finally decide where your destination is, or what we call destiny. The word destiny, the word destination is a derivative of destiny. Where you, and that is true of a car. The final destination of a car depends on where the steering directed is. So as a man willeth in his heart, so is he. Am I talking to anybody here? Now, how do these things work out? I've learned a few things that I want to share with us. Practically, I'm being practical now. Because I've worked on this thing for many years. How does this thing work? You know, I tried some things. It didn't work. I tried this one. But finally, by the help of the Holy Spirit, I'm finally able to come out with a few things that I do work. Because I've used them and they actually work. The first thing I want to talk about is thoughts. See, thoughts have three sources. God, the devil, and you. You are not too important because what will prevail at the end of the day is either God or the devil, depending on which camp you are lying with. You're not that important. You are important, but not that important. Praise the Lord. Are you listening to me? You know, at the end of the day, there's not God's way, your way, and the devil's way. It's either God's way or the devil's way. Now, you can decide to go God's way or the devil's way. Are you listening to me? Now, when a thought comes, that is not the problem. The problem is what your will latches to. I will. I will. You see, if, if, if a, let me use, you know, if a thought of covetousness or immorality or whatever, if it comes to your mind and your mind does not agree and your will does not latch with it, you're not going to do it. <sighs> your will is very important. So your will is what latches on to a thought to give it direction. If your will has not aligned with that thought, it cannot direct any power. I'm giving you the mechanics of how spiritual things are taking place inside our hearts. When I talk, when I speak, I release power. When I now release that power, my will has to keep directing that power, my thoughts through my will, have to, so that it will come to pass what I have desired. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe. Believe that you receive them and then you will have them. Your will has to, and believing has to do with your will. Look at John 20, 25. It's the negative example of uh, Thomas, but it brings out a very important principle. Look at it. The other disciples, I didn't hear you, therefore said unto him, we have seen the Lord, but he, he, he Thomas, said unto them, except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of nails and thrust my hand aside. Watch that. I will not believe. Believing is 
is a function of your will. So shall not doubt in his heart is that he refuses to align his will with what is not in line with the will of God. I'm not going to doubt. I will not doubt. Just like I can say, I will not believe. I can also say, I will not doubt. I will not doubt. Oh. I, I, as an act of my will, I am not going to doubt. Remember Joshua and Caleb. It was a function of their will. It was a function of their will. You know what Joshua said? He said, you guys can do what you like. Oh, this is Olubi Johnson translation. He said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. He said, why are you afraid? He said, they are bread for us. Let us go up at once, for we are well able. The man chose, and it's a choice, to believe God. And he gave a good report. I'm not talking to anybody here. So your will is very, very important. And we see this in David. Psalm 116. Look at verses 9 and 10. Hmm. Then I'll give you some practical things that I have been practicing that will help you. Watch this. I will. I, will. I didn't hear you. I will. Say it again. 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 Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Look at the next verse, verse 10. I believed, therefore I have spoken. Paul quotes this in 2 Corinthians. He says, We have in the same spirit of faith. We believe, and therefore he picked it from, from David by the Spirit. You, you as an act of your will. I you see, if I truly will something, if I, if I want something and I agree with God about it, then I'm going to say it. I believe. Therefore, I have spoken. The Bible calls it the spirit of faith. Give it to me. 2 Corinthians, quickly. 2 Corinthians, I think it's 4.13. 2 Corinthians, there we go. Oh, first, thank you. He says, we having... Oh, I didn't hear you. The same spirit of unbelief. <laughs> Hello? This is the spirit of faith. What do you mean? Spirit there doesn't mean Aje. It means the, the principle of faith. This is, the, this is the essence of faith. We have the same spirit of faith. We believe, therefore we have spoken. We also believe, and therefore, as it is written, and therefore speak. So you got to put voice to what you believe and make sure you maintain a synchrony between what your mouth is saying and what your will is willing. I, I'm, I, I, I deliberately, it's thoughts, because you can't will something if you're not thinking about it. You know, but it's not just idle thoughts. What my mouth is saying and what my will is agreeing with in my heart must be in synchrony so that I can then direct my thoughts through my will. My will is like the rudder, if you like. And now channeling and directing the power that I've been released through my words. So when I pray with the understanding or I pray in tongues or I pray with groaning, it's all coming from the mouth. Whether it's understanding, whether it's tongues, whether it's groaning, it's just how it's coming from. And that's where spiritual power, that's how spiritual power is released. It's released from the heart through the mouth. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 14. Quickly. Beginning to wind down. Deuteronomy. But the word, I didn't hear you, is very nigh unto thee in thy what and in thy that thou mayest look at the sequence it comes out of the mouth is directed by the heart and finally it's done it comes to manifestation mouth releases power heart 
directs the power. Once I direct the power with my heart and my will into the right direction, I will do what God says. Because the power to do it will be there. The reason why so many Christians are not doers of the word and they are hearers only is that when they hear the word, their heart does not, funk, does not, does not latch onto it. And their will is not latched onto it, so they don't do it. So to do the word, I've used I've taught this over the years. For example, the Bible says, be slow to speak, swift to hear, and slow to wrath. How are you going to do that? I've learned it, I'm doing it. I'm doing it better, far better now than I used to do it before. And this is the principle I've used. I say, I, I, I'm slow to speak, I'm swift to hear, and slow to wrath. Then, after I have said it, anything that's going to make me talk plenty, any thought, I bring it into captivity. And my will now aligns with what my mouth has said. And then I direct that power into my mind, my will, my emotions, my body. And you know what's going to happen? I suddenly start getting slow to speak. Swift to hear and slow to wrath. I get angry, but I don't sin. I get angry, and that immediately that anger comes up. The other thing inside that is checking it just goes there and says yes. And then it gives me wisdom how to. Bible says, you know, the, 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 it is the glory of a man to, to pass over a transgression. It says, I deferred my anger. I'm angry, but I put it aside so that I can do the will of God. It comes by the power of the Spirit. Now, let's now go back to Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. The prayer, the supplication, the thanksgiving. <clears throat> I'm going to close with this. This is, this is what I have been practicing. I'm doing it even as I'm talking to you. You know, as the situation <laughs> uh, demands, let me put it that way. I shared this, some of this with us not too long ago. I said one of the greatest blessings, now Satan doesn't bless people, but you know, you should be, every time Satan tempts you, you should be thanking him. He just gave you an opportunity to remember to pray with your thoughts. <laughs> every temptation, and the temptation is not just to sex or sin, temptation to worry, Temptation to fear, temptation, whatever. Every negative thing that comes into your mind is an opportunity to pray. And you know how many negative things come into your mind every day. If for every negative thing that comes into your mind you pray, you will be praying without ceasing. Give the Lord a clap, offering. It's so the answer is so simple. If for every, whatever the Satan brings, every time anything just comes, you know, maybe you're, 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 you're praying or you're on your way to church, you know, and a thought just comes to your mind about your children or something, you know, about, you, about something you're believing God for, some money or your finances, you know, the, the natural thing is to begin to fret and to worry, ah, that thing go, we don't know what's going to happen. You know what I answer with now? I say, Lord, have mercy. I thank you. You're working on it. Prayer, supplication, thanksgiving. What is supplication? Ask for mercy. That's what supplication is. All. And then follow it with thanksgiving. So as the one, as every, for everything that is coming. You understand? I just answer it back. I answer it back with thanksgiving. Let me share a few things with you. You know, whenever... The enemy thinks he has prevailed over you. That really is the time. If Satan is attacking you vigorously in an area, you know why? He's afraid. The minute you see an upsurge in a particular area is because you are making tremendous progress and you are about to break through. Keep the, in fact, you should be happy because it's showing you that you are... <laughs> And you know what? Most of the time when that happens, we get discouraged. And you are just about to make it. Your victory is just around the corner. Once your victory is around the corner, he increases his firepower tenfold. To try and do everything, just, it's very simple. 
Remember prayer, supplication, thanksgiving. Just say, Lord, thank you. I thank you for your mercy. You are working in that situation. I thank you. It is well. In Jesus. I have prayed. I have spoken your word. I have prayed in the spirit. I have grown. I have traveled. I know there is power out there. And I know you are walking. It's well. You know what you just did? You took the power that you had generated in the, in the all night, in the prayer meeting. And what you just did? You just directed in the right direction. You are directing in the right direction. And you know what? It will deliver. Amen. Always. Develop, cultivate the practice of constantly thanking God for his mercy, supplication, on what you have already asked for. I'm going to repeat it. Cultivate the habit of thanking God with your thoughts for his mercy for providing what you have already prayed about. And what you're going to be doing is that you'll be directing the power of God that has already been released in the place of prayer. It, the angels will constantly be working on that thing and finally they will deliver it. Yes, it's worked for me. It will work for you. Amen. This Nigeria problem, see me and say, oh, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at peace. This election, I'm at peace. I'm praying, oh. We're praying, fasting, and all that, but I'm not fretting. So, as you pray, any thought comes to you about Nigeria, just thank God. In everything, give that. And ask for mercy. Thought, thank you for your... At the thought level, say, Lord, have mercy in that situation. Your, 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 your health. Lord, have mercy. Thank you. You pray, oh! See, thoughts don't generate power. They only direct it. That's why we need to keep praying. Praying in the Spirit. Travail, tongues, confession. Pray. Look at that statement. It's a military statement. Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Let's look at the antithesis. What if you don't bring it into captivity? It will, re it will bring you to it. It will direct your, th it will direct the power you generated in another direction and bring you into captivity. That's how important your thoughts are. If you don't bring it into captivity, it would, it's like an arm robber who comes and takes over your car and takes over the steering. The car will go where he tells it to go, not where you want it to go. And the Bible says the devil is a robber. So instead of allowing the arm robber to take over your car, you bring the arm robber into captivity. You direct your thoughts. Your health. You direct your thoughts. Father, thank you. I'm well. I'm healed. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you. I know you're working on it. Thank you. Instead of worry, that, that 20 minutes you spent <laughs> if you had just used that same 20 minutes, for the Father, thank you. It is well. You are working on the situation. You are turning the situation around. Amen. Is, this, is it not the same thoughts? It's the same mind. It's the same will. It's just what you chose to use it for. Did you choose to use it to direct the power of God? Or did you choose to use it to accept the power of the devil? It's your choice. So you must make sure. Is it the practice of practice yes, sir. because we are so used to the negative yes, sir. you don't 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 condemn yourself when you see yourself go maybe you've gone for five minutes you don't remember you are already you make fun of yourself say lord have mercy on me have mercy on me okay i thank you i know you're working on it i thank you when you see that the, 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 the devil's thoughts and uh, the, something is getting faster and faster and you can't uh, pray more Pray more. Go back. You know, maybe find a time. You know, fasting, prayer, Tuesday, all night. Ah, that particular area, I need to put more power there. And then you find that the thoughts become easier. I'm telling you what I practice. It works. Words, tongues, and travail release power. But it is thoughts that direct them.
And when you combine your words, your tongues, your travail, your groanings, and your thoughts, you will pray without ceasing. Let us pray. On the Air has been brought to you by Christ Life Ministries, the outreach arm of the Scripture Pastor Christian Center. You can be a part of this program by becoming a fifth partner with Christ Life Ministries. For details, contact Christ Life Ministries, number 12, Oshutoku Avenue, Bodija Ibadan. You can also download our weekly messages from our website, www.spcconline.org, while our email address is scripturepastor at spcconline.org. You're welcome to worship with us at the Scripture Pastor Christian Center Auditorium, Polytechnic Road, Sango Ibadan. God bless you.